Hey guys, Tim here from Tim's Turf Talk, bringing you another video full of useful information geared towards homeowners that are interested in taking care of Bermuda turf themselves. I've collected a lot of information over the years, so we've created this video collection for you guys to help you guys work through the process. I've learned quite a bit over the years, so I hope you enjoy the content. I look forward to it, and we'll see you guys in a minute. Let's move on to the second part of our video series where we're going to talk about post-emergent weed control. Now in the previous video we talked about pre-emergent weed control which is the preventing of weeds in your turf. Well let's be real here, if preventative weed control was 100% accurate 100% of the time, there wouldn't be post-emergent controls on the market. So let's talk for a few minutes about the types of products you're going to find out on the market. As usual, I will post the link below to the product that I use in my situation, and I'll also provide you a link to a website that has many, many different products, so you can make a decision and find a product that meets your needs. So what kind of products are you actually going to find when you're looking across the internet? You're gonna find two different types of post-emergent weed control or herbicides. You're going to find selective and non-selective herbicides. There are two completely different things, so let's talk about those for just a moment. Let's talk about the non-selective herbicide to start, which basically means this product kills every plant that it comes in contact with. You'll use this type of herbicide for patios, sidewalks, driveways, flower beds, mulch beds, the type of situation where you don't want any type of life growing. This doesn't work in a situation here where we have turf because the turf will die with a non-selective herbicide. So now we need to find a selective herbicide. Selective herbicides come in two different forms. Just like our pre-emergent, you can probably find it in a liquid form and a granular form. I personally use something in a granular form because I feel like the liquid forms are often diluted. You typically would screw that on the end of a water hose and you would spray the turf, broadcasting it over the turf to kill the weeds. Well, I find it difficult to regulate how much product I'm putting down and sometimes I can't quite remember if I've covered an area well or not, so I don't necessarily enjoy the results. I find it's much more reliable to use a granular product and since we're mixing our backpack sprayer for our, our pre-emergent, like we did in the first video, we can simply measure out our post-emergent and add that to the same tank. So let's take a moment and discuss mixing chemicals together in the same tank. I do it because the two chemicals that I use for both post and pre-emergent are safe to use together. I've checked both labels and there are no cautionary notes about not using a particular product with it, so I kill two birds with one stone. If you're going to mix products in a tank, you need to make sure that there will not be an adverse reaction between the two products, so pay close attention to your labels. So let's talk for a moment about selecting an herbicide. One of the most important parts of selecting one is making sure that it's actually safe for you to use on your turf. There's a lot of herbicides that are geared towards different types of turf grasses, so you want to make sure that the one you're selecting is safe for Bermuda grass. This information, as always, is on the label, so if it says safe for use on Bermuda grass, feel free to go ahead and make that purchase. Another factor you're going to want to keep in mind when you're making a decision on the product that you're going to use is the temperature at which you're going to be using the product. Most products on the market are not safe to be used above 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, here in North Carolina, we often exceed that, especially in July and August. So the product I use is one of the few that's on the market to be used above 95 degrees. So keep that in mind when you're making the product selection. If you don't often exceed 90 or 95 degrees, go ahead and broaden your search a little bit, but if you really want to be safe above 95 degrees, I would highly recommend taking a look at the part that I've linked below. The final factor that you're going to need to keep in mind is the type of weeds that your herbicide kills. Most herbicides have a broad spectrum of weeds that they control and kill, so it makes it very, very easy for a homeowner to just select any general product, and then if they have specific weeds that keep surviving application after application, drill down and find a specific herbicide for that specific weed. But you generally just want to make sure you have a broad spectrum of weeds that you can control, and that way through your pre-emergent and your post-emergent dosages, you control most of the weeds that you may see. 
So you can look through the list, and if you're aware that you have dandelions, for example, check the list, see if it's on there. If it's on there, then you know that that herbicide is going to control dandelions. Just a generic example, but it is important to make sure that you have a broad spectrum of weed control if you're doing this as your primary post-emergent weed control. So at this point in time, we've made a product selection and we need to start figuring out how much product we need to cover our turf. We're gonna do this post-emergent routine every 90 days, just like we do with our pre-emergent routine. So let's take the product that I use that I've linked below, let's get to the whiteboard and start doing some math. Here we are in front of the whiteboard again, and at this point in time, you should have made a product selection, and now we need to calculate how much of that product we're going to be using every 90 days. I've checked the label of this product, and this product has a yearly maximum of 4.8 grams. A lot of this information should be somewhat familiar to you from the last video that we did, so we're just gonna continue these calculations now for the post-emergent. So 4.8 grams annually is my maximum, and we're going to be doing the same four dosages that we do with the pre-emergent. So that's gonna give us our 1.2 grams of product every single 90 days. Now, of course, this is only for 1,000 square feet because this product adheres to the 1,000 square foot application base. So now we need to figure out how much turf we're covering. And again, from the last video, I have 3,000 square feet, 1,000 base, three units is what I need to cover my turf. Three times 1.2 grams per 1,000 square feet is 3.6 grams. So I'm using 3.6 grams of product every 90 days in my backpack sprayer. Now a note about this 3.6 grams is that that is actually the maximum amount allowed by the product manufacturer. So to be safe, I would recommend not doing the maximum of the post-emergent. I typically like to be more aggressive on the pre and a little less aggressive on the post. So I would probably just round this down to about three grams especially when the scales for grams can be quite expensive to get to the tenths of a gram. So I just round mine down to a solid three grams. So an important note about the three grams is that this is actually closer to a medium dosage, not necessarily the high end dosage that we've calculated. So what's gonna happen here is that there may be some weeds that may not die when we're doing a medium dosage like this. You'll see on the, the label that there are weeds under the high, under the medium, and under the low dosages. So if something's being really, really pesky and not dying at this medium type of range, go ahead and bump your post-emergent up the next quarter and see if you can go ahead and take care of that weed. So that's just a side note there that you don't always have to do the maximum, but it does come at a cost that there may be some weeds that don't die if you're not doing the maximum. Now let's talk about the money because a lot of this boils down to the homeowner doing the work themselves and saving some money. So this product here, as I mentioned in the first video, is quite a bit more expensive than the pre-emergent. This post-emergent here, I've seen go as high as $200, sometimes as low as $100. So spend some time and see if you can find it at a price point that you're comfortable with. Me personally, I bought mine at $100. And in this product, there is 280 grams. If I'm applying three grams to my turf every 90 days, you'll see that I get approximately 90, was that 27, 10? About 93 total dosages that cover my turf. 93 dosages divided by four dosages per year, 23, somewhere in that ballpark, 23 years of product for the initial investment of $100. This breaks down to approximately $4 a year, a little over $4 a year, and that $4 a year basically breaks down to about 33 cents a month. Now, I know it doesn't sound like a big difference, but when you think about how much the pre-emergent cost, which was about $1.50 a year, and now we're talking about post-emergent at $4 a year, you're talking three times the cost.
Now we're back from doing some math on the whiteboard, and as you can see, we're talking about very, very small quantities of this product. It is highly concentrated. So I feel like it's very, very easy to accidentally overdose your turf if you go more towards the medium and high dosage rates. So I typically recommend people to go more aggressive on the pre-emergent and go a little less aggressive on the post-emergent. That way, if you still have weeds that are surviving your pre-emergent and your post-emergent routine, you can bring your post-emergent volumes up to start tackling those more tough weeds as opposed to just overshooting and causing stress on your turf to begin with. So now we have our pre-emergent calculated from the first video, and now we've calculated our post-emergent here in this video. So now we have two products that we've measured out. What do we do with them? So I know that I mentioned in the first video that I wasn't going to do a video on backpack sprayer calibration, but I've been thinking about it over the past couple days, and I realized that that information is actually really, really important because if you guys have made a product selection for both your post and your pre-emergent, and you've got this stuff sitting on your shelves and you've measured it out, what do you do with it now? So I'm going to take a quick break from the series and do a quick tangent on backpack sprayer calibration and then we'll come back to video number three on the series where we actually start talking about the meat and potatoes of turf management for Bermuda when we actually start talking about the turf itself. So far we've basically been talking about weed and weed control and we haven't been talking about the star of the show, the Bermuda. So we'll get back to video three very, very shortly. But for now, I'm going to take a quick tangent, like I said, and do backpack sprayer calibration. So in conclusion, we've talked about quite a few different topics of post-emergent weed control. We've talked about how some will be selective and some will be non-selective. We've talked about how some will be liquid, some will be granular. And we've taken a real-world example of my product and done some calculations to help you guys figure out exactly how much of that particular product you may need. So I feel like this is a good basis for post-emergent weed control, I'm sure you guys will have questions or comments and feel free to leave those down below and I can help you guys get those questions answered. So thank you so much for your time today. We'll talk to you guys soon and remember, yes, your grass can be greener.